The ability to control fire was arguably one of the most important steps to become human. As one of the main energy sources during the Industrial Revolution, the rapid oxidation of a material started its global triumph. Over millions of years, flora and fauna have saved the energy of solar radiation. Favorable geologic circumstances, pressure, heat and time transformed the organic material into natural gas, oil and coal. These are our carbon batteries. Today about 88% of our global energy demand is furnished by fossil fuels. Thermal engines convert the heat of combustion into mechanical energy. While a vehicle uses this mechanical energy directly for its propulsion, a caloric power plant generates electrical energy. Basically a caloric power plant consists of a boiler, a turbine, a condenser, a feed pump and a mean to cool the condenser, in this case a cooling tower. In the boiler the heat of combustion is used to raise the temperature of a work medium. The medium expands and streams through a turbine. Here the volumetric work of the expanding medium is converted into kinetic energy. The temperature decreases and the medium streams to the condenser. Further heat is extracted, the medium contracts and is fed back into the boiler by a feed pump. A turbine usually powers a generator that produces electricity. The most common heat sources are natural gas, oil and coal. The energy contained in these chemicals is enormous. Methane, the main element of natural gas and most energetic hydrocarbon, contains 12 times more power than the equivalent mass of TNT. Ethane, a second ingredient of natural gas, octane, an ingredient of petrol, and dodecan, which makes up diesel, follow. As the least energetic fossil fuel, coal, comes last. This shows a clear inverse correlation between energy content and molecule size. Contrary to that, the emission of carbon dioxide increases with molecule size. However, the thermal energy of a fuel can only be partially converted into electric energy. The efficiency of the whole process depends on the thermodynamic and the electric efficiency. The maximal thermodynamic efficiency was described by the French physicist Nicolas Carnot. He proved that no thermal engine can exceed the efficiency that results from heat input minus heat output divided by heat input. With the electric efficiency included, the overall efficiency of a caloric power plant adds up to about 40%. If the excess heat is used for community heating, an efficiency of 70% can be reached. Now with the technical basics covered, I can address the elephant in the room. The annual carbon emissions resulting from fossil fuels amount to about 32 billion tons. Further 5.5 billion tons of CO2 are released by deforestation and destructive land use. This may sound insignificant compared to the 550 billion tons of naturally emitted carbon dioxide. But natural carbon sinks absorb an equal amount, so carbon levels would stay constant without human efforts. Hence carbon neutrality becomes a limiting factor when we assess the potential of fossil fuels. In order to balance the unavoidable CO2 emissions, a sufficient carbon sink must be found. Reforestation and better land use would provide such a carbon sink. According to studies, up to 9.8 billion tons of CO2 could be absorbed every year. With these 9.8 gigatons as our limiting factor, I can calculate the percentage of fossil fuels in the future energy mix. Using only methane, 42% of our current energy demand could be provided. For the less energetic ethane, octane and dodecan, the percentage decreases. With coal as our sole fossil fuel, we would have to settle for only 19%. Today, 88% of our energy comes from fossil fuels, far more than our already optimistic assessment allows. The proposed measures to reduce carbon dioxide are future dreams that at best start up slowly. We do not have to completely dispense with fossil fuels, like some environmentalists would fantasize. Nevertheless, to break free of those oily shackles will arguably be the greatest challenge of our time.